Hi guys, welcome back. This is part one of the Little Bigfoot Goat. If you've missed the introduction for this guy, please go and watch that for the important information. That should be popping up on your screen right about now. This video, we are making the muzzle only. So you're going to use the same colored yarn you made your head and your body with. Those of you who don't need help with the crocheted rows, please refer to the written pattern. If you're only here to see how we attach the nose, then you're going to fast forward about seven minutes past uh, row number one of the muzzle. All right, so those of you crocheting along with me, grab your crochet hook and let's get started. So row one is a loop of six stitches. Now in that basic body series, we went over this a number of times. So I'm not going to go over it very slowly because it's just repetitive. And if you need help with it, of course, you can go back to part one and uh, watch me do it very slowly. So I'm making a loop with six stitches. And six. And I close up my ring. Now remember, if you see a big gap in the middle, you can close it up by pulling on that yarn tail. Row two is two single crochets in each one of those six stitches. Remember, you can hide the starting yarn tail if you want to, or leave it hanging and tuck it into the piece later on. Two single crochets in each one of those six stitches. That was two into the third. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. Remember, pause the video and do the row yourself, and then when you're ready to carry on, hit play again. We're finished row two, and now we have 12 stitches around. We're going to add a marker, and I'm going to use yarn as my marker. Keep in mind this can be pulled out along the way, and there's lots of stitch markers out there. Just find the one that works best for you. Row three is one single crochet in the first and then two single crochets into the second and then repeat one two one two all the way around when you land on that marker you'll be putting in two single crochets so you can pause the video and when you land on that marker you can hit play again finished row three and now we have 18 stitches around ready to move on to row four and we're going to do the entire row together Row four is one single crochet in the first two stitches. One and then one into the next. And now two single crochets in the next three stitches. So put two single crochets in each of those three stitches. One and two and now into the next one. One and two. And now into the next one one and two. One single crochet in the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Two single crochets in the next three stitches. So go ahead and put two single crochets in each of those three stitches. And now one single crochet in the remaining four stitches. When you land on that marker, I'd be putting in a single crochet. Done row four, and now we have 24 stitches around. Move that marker. Okay, so if you need to catch up, remember to pause the video. When you're ready to move on to row five, hit play again. Row five is one single crochet in the next four stitches. Two single crochets into the next. 
and now one single crochet in the next 11 stitches. Instead of me doing that and counting them out, just hit the pause button and I'll meet you back here on the 11th stitch. And 11. Now two single crochets into the next. In one single crochet in the next seven stitches. When you land on the marker, you should be putting in a single crochet. So again, you can hit pause and hit play again when you land on the marker. And seven. I finished row five and now we have 26 stitches around. It's starting to fold up on itself, so just remember, turn it right side. Row six and seven is one single crochet in each one of those 26 stitches for two rows. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row seven. I'm at the end of row seven. Row eight is one single crochet in the next 11 stitches and then crochet two together and repeat one more time. When you land on the marker, you'll be crocheting two stitches together. So this is a sequence that you do you do twice. One single crochet in the next 11 stitches and then two together. So you can pause the video and we'll meet back here when you land on the marker. I'll finish row 8 and now we're down to 24 stitches. Row 9 is one single crochet in the next two stitches and then crochet two together and repeat all the way around. Now remember if you are a person who starts to see gaps as you're decreasing that you can in you can decrease in either the front loop or the back loop, whichever one you find easiest, and that should take care of those gaps. If you don't see the gaps, don't worry about it. Just go through both loops. Okay, keep repeating that sequence. We'll meet back here when we land on the marker. I'll finish row nine, and now we have 18 stitches around. Row 10 is one single crochet in each one of those 18 stitches. Again, you can pause the video and meet back here and we land on the marker. Just finished row 10. We no longer need a marker. Now we're going to slip stitch the next stitch and finish off. So just go into the next one. Pull the yarn through. Instead of yarning over, just pull the first loop through the second loop. And you have slip stitch. Now you're going to finish off. Leave a nice long tail for sewing. We'll use this tail to sew the muzzle. To the face. Pull that yarn tail through that loop. So there is the muzzle all finished. Now the starting yarn tail should be in the center and at the bottom when we sew it on. That's how I sew all mine on. I usually have the starting yarn tail at the bottom of whatever I'm sewing on. And you can see the way I designed it, it's longer here. It's not like a round ball. It's got a definite oval shape to it. Okay, and these noses are up pretty high. And you can choose any color you want. And you can make it any shape you want. This one's a bit rounder. Okay, so I wrap mine over the fifth and sixth row. So we just count from here. One, two, three, four five and six. So I'm going to bring my yarn tail through the inside and come up in between the fourth and the fifth row. One, two, three, four, and five. So in between there. And now leave one yarn tail hanging in the back and just pull one through. Oh my goodness, my yarn tail is too long here. It's really long. Okay, and like I said, I'm going to wrap over the fifth and sixth row. So wrapping over those two rows and I'll come back and pull the yarn tail through. Don't pull it tight, just pull it until it until it's in place. Okay. Now we can make a shape here. I'm gonna know where I'm in the center. So I'll go here. I'll just make like a little triangular shape. See what I'm doing there? So it's just a matter of wrapping the yarn until you have the size and shape that you want. 
and you can guide the strands too. And what I mean by that is pull it through, but before pulling it all the way, see that? Now I can just put that where I want it and then pull it. Okay, I'm just going to keep wrapping until I have the size that I want. I think I wrapped two or three times over each original strand that I put in there. And again, you can do it any which way. This was just once. You can see actually see the gray underneath there. This one wasn't done with yarn. It was done with embroidery thread. So it's really it's just a matter of preference what you do. Okay, I'm going to pull that through now that I'm happy with the shape and the size of that. Now I'm going to knot off these two yarn tails. I'll double knot it. I'll cut those yarn tails up a bit shorter and then I'll tuck them inside. Alright guys, we're going to be doing more with this muzzle after we get it sewn onto the goat's head. So for now we can set this aside and whatever you need help with next, you're going to be hitting one of those links that are popping up on your screen and it'll bring you to the next video and I'll just meet you over there.